what some people are coming to accept as science and as religion have become so fraudulent on both sides that I think they both need to be redefined. Science is not what we have come to know, but how we have come to know it. Through the senses, you can stock up information in your brain, and through these senses, which we call empirical, you can stock up a bunch of information in your brain. This process is called empiricism. From this empiricism, then you can comprehend or deduce reasons that those facts existed in the first place. This process is science. Religion is when you let an authority figure come along and offer you another piece of information. The comprehension rate is much higher, but this person might not have it right. What if the face doesn't even have a nose? What if the nose belonged over here as part of the mouth? What if this person has no intention of finishing your comprehension of the face, and they're just doodling for fun? Allowing somebody else authorship of your comprehension like this is done at the expense of your own capacity to reason. Though both approaches may attempt to expand your comprehension, the approach which requires that you use, and therefore preserves your ability to reason, is the approach which requires empirical deduction, otherwise known as deductive reasoning. And the approach which attempts to bypass and therefore incapacitates your ability to reason is the approach which uses solely authoritarian induction, otherwise known as inductive reasoning. Good science will move claims from inductive reasoning to deductive reasoning. When a group of facts comes to support a reason for those facts, we call that deductive reasoning because we have deduced from a greater number of facts to a lesser number of reasons for those facts. In this model, we will just call that from the bottom up, and it is the essence of science. When a reason tries to induce a greater number of facts and claim authority on them, it is from the top down, and it is the essence of religion. Good science will try to move from this direction to this direction. Since this initial reason does have a certain claim of authority, for short, we just call it a claim. And even though this initial claim was right, it was not a scientific claim until it could be shown to be right through deductive reasoning. Now if this claim tries to induce not another fact, but another claim which would rely on its own facts, it is also not scientific until it can be shown through deductive reasoning that those facts back this claim which backs the initial claim. I'm hoping that here you recognize the scientific method. No matter what names you give to each of these steps, the process is the same. First, you take a claim from inductive reasoning and then substantiate it through deductive reasoning. If you just follow this process halfway and start teaching these claims from the phase of inductive reasoning, you are teaching religion, not science. So it really should go without saying that even though these claims might have been right all along, they are not scientific claims until they can be demonstrated through deductive reasoning. Now, if you have been teaching a set of claims that comes after nine layers of predictive claims, like the theory of evolution does, you are teaching religion, not science. If you are a teacher who has been teaching these claims without giving any deductive support for them and calling them science, you are a fraud. Science is how we know what we know. It is not the religion of what we think we know. Though these claims may prove to be right, they do not fit the realm of science until they can be shown scientifically. Okay, enough of that. Now back to definitions. Correctly employing the scientific method brings about a third type of reasoning. If this original claim inductively hypothesizes a certain claim which is later deductively substantiated, that process served to expand the authority of the original claim. If this process is repeated enough times to draw a pattern, then it can be said that this claim had the power of predictive are you ready for this? Abduction, otherwise known as abductive reasoning. Abductive reasoning has been called the art of guessing things right. It is in part the strength of an original claim, or more appropriately, its substance. It is the evidence of things that were not known before, and it is the assurance that we will keep finding things where we are looking even though we can't immediately prove that they are there. Since it is a part of how we know what we know, it is a valid part of science. It is religion which would narrow this claim's authority so that it sacrifices the substance of the claim, the evidence of things that it provided, and the assurance of finding things in the future. In other words, whether by unwarranted authorship of comprehension or by ignoring mountains of evidence, religion is, again, the reason why we don't know what we could have known. Within abductive reasoning, we find our own miniature scientific method that uses all three forms of reasoning. The strength of a claim relies on how well it was substantiated in the past. That is what determines whether we give it any inductive authority to begin with. 
The evidence that it provides gives us power of deduction in the present, and the assurance that it provides is what assures us that it will continue in the future. It looks like a duck, it walks like a duck, it quacks like a duck, it's probably a duck. And since this is probably a duck, then its beak is also the beak of a duck. And if this is the beak of a duck, it should have the nostril of a duck, which would show up as a shaded area in pictures. And since it has a shaded area, which we think belongs to the nostril of a beak of a duck, then this really must be a duck. Since we're really pretty sure this is a duck, it probably also has the leavings of a duck. And since its leavings show the diet of a duck, these are probably duck leavings. Since it looks like a duck, walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, has the beak of a duck, and craps like a duck, it's probably a duck. Since we're so sure this is a duck, it probably files a 1040 duck. Well, we checked with the IRS and found him on file, so he looks like a duck, walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, has the beak of a duck, crap of a duck, and the tax status of a duck. This is a duck. Since the original idea that this might have been a duck came to be so well substantiated in the past, and provided us with a whole bunch of evidence that we can rely on in the present, and kept reinforcing its assurance that we would find out more about it throughout time, this is the reinforcing pattern that leads us to believe that we will eventually come to learn the truth about the duck. The interplay of these three forms of reasoning is the definition of faith, and faith is what will bring us to a comprehension of the truth. If you cannot allow abductive reasoning into your scientific method and you think it's all false positives and sheer luck, then your religion is the reason that you cannot experience the true reason that men of faith are happy. The notion that truth is relative stems from a misunderstanding of these forms of reasoning. So in order to establish that truth is absolute, I want to start from how evidence gives rise to substance. In other words, what exactly makes deductive reasoning valid in the first place? This is the study of argumentation, and in order to get the most out of it, we should remove the ambiguity of fact by first redefining empiricism.